Welcome back. I am Ram Prasad Pujari and this video is part 10 of Python programming series. Here we focus on features and functionalities of scikit-learn machine learning library. Scikit-learn is also called as sklearn. It's an open source Python library for machine learning. It provides tools and algorithms for performing machine learning tasks. Uh, here, uh, you know, sklearn also has several data sets which you can directly load onto your notebook and there are uh, pre-implemented algorithms that can be directly used. Similarly, uh, there are number of functionalities uh, sklearn provides. So we will discuss uh, more about this during our demo session. Along with that, sklearn also has some dependencies. For example, NumPy, Scientific Python, Matplotlib, these libraries are dependencies. That means before we install scikit-learn, we have to make sure that these dependencies are already installed. Before we start using sklearn, so make sure that sklearn library is installed in your system. Uh, you can use a pip command or conda command. The instructions are given in this official web page. So this link I will provide you in the description box and you can check that. If Anaconda is installed in your system, then you can go for Conda commands. Uh, if you're using Google Colab as an interface, it comes with pre-installed sklearn library. This is the machine learning pipeline. We saw this during our last session. Uh, here we want to understand how sklearn can be used to perform you know, various operations under different stages. So if you look at the first stage, data collection, of course, the sklearn uh, doesn't handle data collection, but it has a module called data sets. And uh, so we can load standard data sets from there. And under data preparation and feature engineering, uh, we can uh, make use of pre-processing of data. We can perform pre-processing. Uh, there's something called as a scaling. We can scale the features and uh, using standard scaler and min max scaler so we will look at uh, these scaling operations during our demo session and apart from that you can also perform label encoding you can encode the variables that means you can convert non-numeric variables into uh, numeric variables and similarly uh, scale learn functions can be used to train a model and sklearn has pre-implemented algorithms uh, which can be directly used and to train the model there's a function called fit function and we can use fit function to train the model on the data set once the model is trained then we'll have to evaluate the performance so we need a test data set and uh, you know uh, so test data set is a new data set which is not part of the training data set and sklearn uh, can be used to evaluate the performance by generating performance metrics where it can show the accuracy score precision recall etc uh, we will discuss about each of this stage separately in a later videos but this is the overall idea so we see that uh, you know sklearn has functionalities uh, which will be helpful in various stages. Uh, let us look at the limitations of sklearn. sklearn is a high level API for machine learning and uh, unlike uh, TensorFlow, it does not provide flexibility and low level functionality. Now advantage of high level API is uh, it's very you know the simple coding and accessible to beginners uh, but the thing is that when you're working on deep learning neural network based architectures in that case, uh, you know, TensorFlow or PyTorch, they are recommended. So you can't use sklearn. sklearn is meant for uh, traditional machine learning algorithms, which I have listed here. Now for the lab exercise, I'm using JupyterLab. You can use any other interface. If you're using Google Colab, then it comes with pre-installed sklearn library. Uh, so here is the machine learning pipeline and uh, the first task that we want to perform is loading the iris data set using data set module of sklearn library and then we will convert that data set into pandas data frame 
So if you look at uh, the task one, so we need uh, two libraries here. The first one, we need a data set module of a scalar. And under data set module, we have a function called load iris, uh, which will load the iris data set. And iris data set is a very small data set pertaining to three flower species which are shown here, iris setosa, iris versicolor, iris virginica. And uh, the first thing what we want to do is we want to import these libraries. We also need pandas library to convert sklearn data set into pandas data frame. So we will load the iris data set using a function called load iris and we will save this data set in a variable called data set. If you look at the data type, it is bunch, it is not data frame. Uh, we want to convert this data set into data frame, pandas data frame. So we can make use of this particular function, pd.dataframe and data set is the name of the sklearn data set. And after that, you can specify the columns, the feature names, which are independent variables. We have four independent variables in uh, iris data set. So these are the features. These are the independent variables. And then there is a dependent variable or the target variable. Now, if you look at this uh, particular code, so there are two lines. The first one is for uh, converting the feature columns into pandas data frame and similarly the second one for the target variable or output variable so output variable in this case will be a categorical value because there are three different classes zero for iris setosa one for iris versicolor and two for iris virginica so we will convert the sklearn data set which has a data type bunch as shown here into pandas data frame. And we know that once we get the data frame, we can easily analyze and manipulate it. Part nine of Python programming series, I have discussed pandas library in detail. So you can watch uh, that video also. So we have converted a scale learn data set into pandas data frame and saved in a variable called df. So which has five columns, four feature columns or independent variables and one output variable or target variable, which is a categorical value. So it has either zero, one, two, depends on the uh, flower class or flower species. So this is a very small data set with 150 rows or 150 samples. So this is the first task of converting or loading the iris data set from sklearn data set using data set module and under this module we used a function called load iris to load iris data set then we converted that into pandas data frame. So now we look at task 2. Task 2 is specific to stage 2 of machine learning pipeline. So here we want to understand a pre-processing of data. So first we'll take scaling operations and what we want to do is we want to scale the feature columns between 0 and 1. That means the entire column will have a minimum value of 0 and maximum value of 1 and all the values will be scaled between 0 and 1. Now for this particular task we need a module called pre-processing module of a scale learn and we are going to use min max scaler. So when we use min max scaler, min max scaler, so we can scale the values between zero and one. And we also need a numpy library here. I will explain this later and pandas library. So these three libraries are required and we need to import them. I'm not going to use iris data set here. So I'm going to use another data set called as Framingham data set and this data set is about uh, heart study and so 
you can see that uh, you know I'm going to load the CSV file here and then I will display the first five rows using a head function. So this is a data frame so I can use the head function to print the first five rows and if you look at uh, the first five rows and you can see that it has got large number of fe feature columns and there is a target variable which is binary. Uh, if you look at the feature column, this is specific to a heart study. It gives information about a patient. And uh, if you look at the feature columns, uh, there are feature columns pertaining to blood pressure, heart rate, glucose level, BMI, and uh, other feature columns. Okay, so it's a very large data set. It has got around 4,000 uh, rows, 4,000 samples and also you know more than 10 feature columns it has and the target variable is binary here zero indicates that uh, there is no risk of coronary heart disease chd and uh, one indicates that there is a risk of coronary heart disease in during the next 10 years okay now for my task i don't need all the features here because i'm not going to classify uh, you know perform classification here I will just extract uh, three important columns from this. See, the task is to scale the feature columns between 0 and 1 using min-max scaler. So I don't need all the feature columns. So what I will do is I will extract uh, three feature columns here. One is systolic BP, diastolic BP, and heart rate. Okay, so. I don't need the target variable. I'm not going to perform any classification. Uh, data is the name of the data set that I have, the entire data set. Now, out of this, I will pick only three columns, and this is possible by specifying the feature names. I have specified the feature names. Uh, systolic, you know, systolic PP, diastolic BP, and heart rate. So that will give me a new data set with only three feature columns okay so then I will print the first five rows and you can see that I got a very small data set here okay so only three columns are here so this is more than enough to understand this task now if you look at this feature columns this has got uh, you know uh, values ranging between maybe 100 to between 100 and 200 etc Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to scale these values between 0 and 1. So, for that, I will use a min max scaler. I have already imported the necessary library here. So, I'm going to initialize my scaler by using this particular function. And a scaler, so that is the min max scaler, I have initialized it. So, I'll use a function called fit transform of x. X is my new data set with three columns and I will save the scaled version in this particular variable. Now remember, X is a data frame, Pandas data frame, whereas when you apply this particular function, you are converting that into a different data type called as NumPy n-dimensional array. Okay, so X scaled will not be a Pandas data frame. And uh, since it is a NumPy array, I can't uh, use a head function here. So I'm going to display the first five rows by specifying uh, the index. So 0 to 4. So five four columns will be displayed here. I can easily convert this NumPy array into Pandas data frame by using this particular function. So pd.dataframe of x scaled. So x1 is going to be a data frame with three columns. So now I can use a head function. So this is our task two where we converted the feature columns between zero and one. As you can see here, initially I had these values. Okay, so for systolic BP. Now you can see that these values have been scaled between zero and one. And similarly, other columns. So this is a pre-processing task and there are advantages of scaling and that we are going to discuss when we discuss about algorithms.
Task 3 is converting non-numerical features to numerical features. So we need to make sure that before we start training a model, uh, we have to have a data with only numerical values. If any of the column has non-numeric values, we need to convert that into numeric values. So this task 3 is again a pre-processing task and we are going to use what is called as a label encoder to convert a non-numerical feature into a numerical feature. Now for this task, I need two libraries. One is pandas library because I'm going to read a CSV file here. And after that, I need a label encoder function, uh, which is uh, in pre-processing module of SKLR. So these are the two libraries which I'm importing here. The first task is uh, we need a data set which has a non-numerical features. So I'm going to load mallcustomers.csv. I have this CSV file in my local folder. And uh, I'm going to use a pandas function called as a read CSV. And I will save the data set or data frame in a variable called data set. So here I have five rows of this data set. And you can see that one of the column, that is a gender feature column, has a non-numeric values. So before I proceed to the next stage of training, I have to make sure that this is converted into numeric values. Now in this case, it's going to be a, a binary value because there are only two cl classes, male and female. So I need to convert that into a binary values. Maybe, you know, one for male, zero for female, etc. Now for this particular task, I'm going to use what is called as a label encoder. So I will initialize the label encoder. The label encoder function is available under pre-processing module of sklearn. I have already imported it, so I can initialize this. Then I'm going to use a fit transform function and I'm going to specify a specific feature name, that is gender here. So I will apply this transform only to that particular column that is gender column to convert this into a binary value. So then I'm going to display the first five rows and you can see that non-numeric values are converted into numeric values. So male is replaced by one and female is replaced by zero. Let us look at task four. Task four is splitting the data set into train and test data set. As we know that we need two different data set, one for training a model and after training in order to test or evaluate, we need another smaller data set. And we usually keep a ratio of 70 is to 30 or 80 is to 20 while splitting the data set. So I'll go for 70 is to 30. It purely depends on the size of the data set. We need two libraries here. One is the pandas library and the second one we are going to use a function called train test split of model selection module under scalar. So these are imported here and uh, after that we need a data set. I'm using iris data set. I have the CSV file in my local folder in the same path so I will load this particular thing. I am going to read this using pandas function called read csv. Okay. Now in order to use this particular function we have to separate x and y from this. x will have four columns which are feature columns and y will have target or the last column. So there are two ways to get x. One is you can specify the feature column names or feature names and then you can extract x so that's what is done here in the data set data frame you specify the columns which you want to extract and you will get x which is being displayed here you can see that this has got only four columns the second way the easier way is instead of uh, doing this 
you can drop the last column from the main data set using a drop function and specify the column which you are going to drop that is target and also specify axis equal to one because you're going to drop a column not a row so axis equal to one to be specified now what this particular function does is it drops a column with a name target so that we end up getting the remaining columns the four columns which is nothing but x so both of these functions will give the same data frame so once you get x you can also separate y from the main data set by specifying the target name which is target in this case and y has only one column and 150 rows now after that we can use a function called train test split function and uh, this requires input parameters x and y which already we have got x is nothing but uh, you know feature columns there are four columns and y is nothing but the target variable we can also specify the test data set size 0.3 indicates 30 percent of the data set will go for test data set and 70 percent for training data set that means out of 150 samples 30 percent of 150 means around 45 samples uh, will go for test data set and 105 for training data set now in addition to that you can also give other input parameters or arguments so there is a random state and you can specify some seed value here which is an arbitrary number and similarly stratify i will just explain these two parameters a little later this is about the input parameters now when it comes to output parameter output arguments uh, so this particular function will give us x train x test y train and y test so x train and y train put together that becomes your training data set and similarly x test and y test put together you get a test data set now if i display the x train so that's going to be like this and uh, this has got one zero five rows and four columns now let me explain what is random state here i have specified random state and some seed value here which is an arbitrary number if you specify this every time when you run this train test split function you end up getting the same rows that means you know every time you get the same rows let us say these are the row numbers that you have and uh, you're going to get the same rows every time when you run if you specify a random state function so that is the that is the meaning of a random state function so if i don't specify this now you can see that uh, i will run it again and you can see that the number of rows the, the row number will be same the same samples you will get every time but if i remove this and if i don't use random state then you can see that i'm going to get different values different row numbers every time so now you can see that the rows are different or the samples are different so i'm going to get differences so if you want to preserve the same samples every time when you run you can give a random state and specify them as some arbitrary number now apart from that there is something called as a stratify equal to y so when you are splitting it, you are going to get 105, as you can see here. Uh, now I can count the number of samples in white train. If I count number of samples here, so there will be 105. And uh, out of them, you know that there are three different classes, 0, 1, 2. And if I, if I look at, if I look at this white train, white train is nothing but uh, the output uh, column of a train data set which has target column and it has got again 105 rows and one column and if you want to preserve exactly 35 each of these samples 35 samples pertaining to class 0 35 
class 1 and 35 class 2. So if you want to preserve this proportion, in that case you can give stratif phi equal to y. So this will make sure that when you split the data set, you know, so you get uh, equal number of samples across all the classes. So that is that is the thing. So, but if you if you remove this stratify y now in this case you can see that this has got 105 rows, whether x train or y train, 105 rows will be there, and uh, equally it will be distributed. So there will be 35 rows corresponding to class 0, 35 rows corresponding to class 1, 35 rows corresponding to class 2. So equal distribution will be there. So stratify y will take care of that. But if I remove that stratify y, uh, you can see that, you know, I'll be getting different number of samples. So here I have removed stratify y and you can see that now if I print the value counts, class 1 I have 37 samples, class 2 37 and class 0 I have 31. So it will not give equal number of samples. So this is about splitting the data set and this is very very important. You can either go for 70 is to 30 or 80 is to 20. When you have a larger data set then uh, you can decide you can go for 80 is to 20 also. Now I don't want to make a very lengthy video. There are other things to be discussed. We need to discuss about a fit function also about the performance matrix. So this I will keep for the next video. Thank you so much.